As a surgeon, I don't really have a dog in the fight here, and it's always fun debating Dr. Berlin on a topic. As usual, he was distracting, like our current White House, finding reasons to, to kind of uh, steer us away, showing us locally advanced metastatic data. But really, remember the question, what is the optimal neoadjuvant therapy for pancreatic cancer? And indeed, I'm going to argue that Chemo radiation therapy is the approach. Now let's go to the NCCN guidelines first. A panel that uh, Dr. Berlin is uh, is on this panel and helped made these decisions. So, first of all, you can see that uh, that with resect the question is is it resectable or borderline? And when you interestingly, at least currently with the NCCN panel, resectable disease the recommendation is surgery up front. So it's really we're de debating neoadjuvant therapy in the borderline setting, not in the resectable setting. Saying that, more and more now I think there are op options to think about neoadjuvant therapy for the resectable disease, but currently our guidelines are really focusing on the borderline, and that's going to be important, particularly as it relates to the role of chemoradiation therapy. If you look at the guidelines here indeed for borderline resectable, biopsy, and this is where neoadjuvant therapy is generally the approach that's recommended. And so if you look at their, their recommendations here, limited evidence to recommend the specific regimens off study practices with regard to chemo versus chemo radiation. This is our debate. So it's really borderline patients, chemo versus chemo radiation, or chemo followed by chemo radiation. That's the sense of our debate. Well, let's talk a little bit about borderline. It is somewhat confusing, and really one can think about borderline, it's based on preoperative imaging studies, and it's really, a, uh, we think about both arterial versus venous, and at least examples of arterial, it's, and you can see there are various definitions depending on the groups, but tumor contact less than 80 degrees, under 180 degrees, this is the superior mesenteric artery, but also the hepatic artery, abutment or encasement, short segment. The arterial definition versus the venous definition, again, abutment or involvement of the superior mesenteric vein, but still potentially resectable. The reason we make a distinction between a venous borderline versus arterial borderline, as we'll talk about, this group of patients, even without a response, are potentially resectable, whereas arterial typically are not. Now, as we heard about in, in gastroesophageal cancer, margin negative is the key. That is really the answer. And, and I would argue even more complex than, than a gastroesophageal cancer, margin negative resection is really important. Uh, surgical technique is important. And it's typically this margin here, uh, often the retroperitoneal margin, that's the challenge for some in many surgical uh, series, and I would argue even when you look at the data of the presented, presented literature in high volume academic centers, much like in gastroesophageal cancer, in the community setting, we're probably seeing higher margin positive rate and, and inability to achieve an, a clear margin against both the vein and the artery. So R0 resection is a critical component. Surgical therapy, surgical technique is very important, but here is a role where radiation therapy can help mop up those margins. And as I mentioned, the, the, perp, the, the board of venous versus arterial involvement is important. Portal venous or superior mesenteric vein involvement can be managed with a vein resection. So those are still technically resectable to, in order to avoid an R0, R1 resection, but it typically involves vein, it would involve vein resection, which adds morbidity. Whereas the, in contrast, arterial abutment is almost universally associated with an R1 or even R2 resection. So one needs to really think about the definitions of the, the extent of borderline. What is the rationale for neoadjuvant therapy? And we've, we've heard this before, and Dr. Berlin mentioned it. There are many advantages to neoadjuvant therapy in general. One is the early therapy of radiologically micrometastatic disease, so that's a, an argument. The other is to avoid the morbidity in patients that develop metastases early on, prior to, to recommending a aggressive surgical therapy. It does increase the number of patients receiving adjuvant therapy. After pancreatic oduodenectomy, often patients do not get adjuvant therapy, whether that's chemotherapy or radiation or chemo radiation therapy and it may improve actually may improve the performance status not not worse for patients undergoing pancreatic oduodenectomy but one of the key rationale arguments for neoadjuvant therapy is as i mentioned to get 
to improve the margin negative rate. Attempt to sterilize the periphery of the, of the margin, allowing for complete R0 resection. And as you've heard about before, in other diseases, in pancreatic cancer, you know, does mar is margin positive associated with worse survival? I think the answer is very clear. You, you, you are in trouble if you have a margin positive resection. If you look at the Hopkins data, R0 versus R1, WASH U data, other studies, both in progression, recurrence rate, of course, and, and overall survival, it's clear that R1 resection and definitely R2 resection is associated with a very high, a very high uh, uh, recurrence and and uh, recur recurrence rate and poor overall survival. If you look at the MD Anderson data, which also suggested that R0 does better than R1, I think it's pretty universal. Here, actually, in this group of patients in which chemoradiation was offered, actually, the, even the margin, even the R1 patients did somewhat better. And in this study, at least, suggested the difference between R0 and R1 were less dramatic than in those patients that did not receive preoperative chemo radiation therapy, suggesting even in R1, uh, the survival is better with radiation therapy. But it's pretty clear margin, margin positive is associated with a worse outcome. In fact, if you look even at SPAC1, remember this was the trial Dr. Berlin talked about for postoperative adjuvant therapy. R0 resection is critical. The outcomes were worse with R1. And in fact, they concluded that the magnitude of benefit from any postoperative chemotherapy treatment is reduced in patients with R1 versus R0 margin. That is our goal. Does chemoradiation therapy improve margin status? I think the evidence is quite clear. Margin negative rate is higher. R0 rate is higher in chemoradiation, no question about it. There haven't been head-to-head -head comparison trials, but if you look at series, let's say MD Anderson, which almost universally offered preoperative chemoradiation therapy, reported R1 rate of 17%. The Hopkins historic series, where typically chemoradiation was not offered prior to therapy, typically these were upfront surgery patients, R1 resection rate, 41% in the Hopkins series. And if you look at even the outcomes, if you compare, let's say, the retrospective series from Mayo, from Hopkins, MGH, and, and uh, MD Anderson, if you look at the margin rate, 24%, 42%, 30%, 17% in this group, which were largely treated with preoperative radiation therapy, lower R1 rates. But interestingly, even if you look at the outcomes of patients with R1, which typically portends poor prognosis, Survival, we're not talking about local recurrence, survival higher than patients, even with R1, who are treated with chemo radiation therapy. Interestingly, we talk about response rates. We don't see radiologic response rates, whether with chemotherapy or with chemo radiation therapy. MD Anderson data again, 122 of 129 patients. Borderline patients, you can see this is with chemo radiation therapy. While they did achieve 95% R0, resist response, 12% partial response, 70% stable disease, and 19% progression, of which none of these patients were resected. So whether it's chemo radiation or chemotherapy alone, we don't see radiologic responses. Now, you've heard about the increased enthusiasm for modern combination regimens, fulfirinox, gempaxil, taxil. And, and, and early, the, in the past, the, the, the lack of interest in chemotherapy alone was because it was relatively ineffective systemic chemotherapies. Now, with, with metastatic disease, we're seeing more effective systemic therapies, so there's an enthusiasm for chemotherapy alone in the neoadjuvant setting. I think it's certainly reasonable with these new combination regimens in stage four disease. But trials are still, as we mentioned, are ongoing with these more modern regimens in the adjuvant and neoadjuvant setting. Currently, we have no evidence to support the benefit of, of these combination therapies alone or with radiation therapy. And it's particularly of concern to be offering these regimens in borderline patients where we may uh, 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 take a chance on, on reducing the margin negative resection rate. As you've seen, if you look at most, the other, most neoadjuvant series, there's very little chemotherapy alone. If you look at a, a, a series of neoadjuvant studies for borderline resectable, almost all include radiation therapy. So we don't have much evidence to support chemotherapy alone.
And the question is, uh, does neoadjuvant therapy alone, how, we don't have data, does neoadjuvant therapy alone, even the modern regimens, improve margin status? Uh, the point I mentioned, very important. Probably not. We don't see good data. If you look at the data from Memorial, from Eileen O'Reilly, phase two with gem oxaloplatin in resectable patients, response rate of 10%, local progression 19%, not resected. R's, R1 resection rate, 26%, no difference, uh, not any different than the groups. In one small study looking at uh, gem napaxotaxel preoperatively compared to surgery alone, this was not in a randomized trial, but the subsets in advanced disease were comparable, the vein resection was comparable, the R0, R1 resection rate was comparable. And we've had other series also, smaller series, even with modern fulfirinox, suggesting we're not seeing a dramatic improvement in margin negative resection rate with chemotherapy alone. You've seen this first study, the Alliance data looked at this question of chemotherapy, fulfirinox, followed by chemoradiation, suggest this regimen can be done, and indeed patients could tolerate this regimen, and there were some, uh, so, uh, uh, in borderline patients, uh, good outcomes as far as margin negative, and in even path CR rates in selected patients. This is the important ongoing trial, the Alliance trial randomizing the exact question of the debate with uh, aggressive modern chemotherapy, fulfirinox followed by surgery and ke postoperative chemotherapy, versus fulfirinox with radiation therapy. This trial is near completion of accrual, and this will be really fundamentally answering this question. Finally, the radi radiation is a moving target, and while there are different ways, I won't speak about the details of how radiation therapy is delivered, but this has changed from a more of a, of a, of a broad, lower dose approach to a more of a hypofractionated or even using low dose or, or more standard stereotactic uh, radiation therapy, SBRT, so it's hard to know whether with more modern approaches that we may even improve the ability to sterilize the margins and achieve even higher R0 resection rates than in the older studies using, that had used more standard radiation therapy. A little bit of data, these are data from Joe Herman, from Johns Hopkins, suggesting in borderline and even locally advanced patients that went to surgery that SBRT regimens had significantly higher margin negative rates compared to those patients with uh, chemotherapy alone. So to, when one thinks about the resectability spectrum, this is an important component of when to truly decide whether to use radiation therapy. I do think there's a spectrum from resectable to locally advanced with borderline in the middle, but as I mentioned, there are a variety of flavors of borderline, some that are near locally advanced and some that are closer to resectable. They're venous versus arterial, abutment versus a case encasement, and all may determine as to what strategy to use. I do think there's a role for radi chemo radiation therapy in all the subsets of patients, but particularly in the borderline there's, and, and in the more advanced borderline patients, certainly a role for preoperative chemo radiation therapy is there. So in conclusion, R0 resection is a critical, controllable parameter that impacts survival, not local control, impacts survival. No question about it. Our goal is a margin negative resection. Does neoadjuvant therapy improve margin negative rate? Absolutely, the data is clear. Does neoadjuvant chemotherapy alone improve margin rate? We don't know. At least seemingly from the early data, it suggests no. So I think in conclusion, at least currently until we have further data to support it, what's the optimal neoadjuvant strategy for pancreatic cancer? The answer should be chemoradiation therapy. Thank you.